Hi, welcome to James Miller Lifeology, where you learn to simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. My name is James Miller. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and a composer. Thank you so much for joining with us today. Let's get started. I have some exciting news. Did you know that I'm on the radio three times a week? You may hear me on the same station on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m., Fridays at 9.30 a.m., and Saturdays at 12.30 p.m. You may also hear me on iHeartRadio, as well as on all the other major podcasting platforms, such as iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and many others. Simply search for the show name, James Miller Lifeology. I have a great show for you today. I'm going to help you renew your sense of wonder. I'll also be interviewing magician Michael Grandinetti, who is one of the principal magicians on the CW's Masters of Illusion. He is going to share his own story of how he became a magician, as well as how he helps individuals renew their sense of wonder. You all know me as a psychotherapist, but some of you may not yet know me as a composer. I currently have two albums which have been released. Think of both albums like books. Each original composition is written like a chapter in a book. The first album, Consolation, explores a character's grief and loss. And just like in any book, the story explores a character's heartache and eventually he finds healing and hope. The second album, Restoration, explores a character's personal development. He has an awakening, and in that awakening, he recognizes all the things in his life which aren't healthy, and it helps him come to a place of restoration, being restored to something greater than before. You may purchase both albums on iTunes or any other digital music store. The names of the albums are Consolation and Restoration, and my stage name is James S. Miller. The name of the piece you're currently hearing is from the second album, Restoration, entitled Determination. Renewing your sense of wonder. When was the last time you were amazed with something? We often say, oh my gosh, that blew my mind. But in all sincerity, when was the last time that something really impressed you or you couldn't believe that it had happened? And I think it's really important that we reflect on that because our life can become so mundane. The rigmarole of life causes us to forget that there are wonders in the world today that we've never experienced before. We all get caught up in the minutia of life or the things that we have to do every day, and it just becomes routine. Mediocrity is something that will often set in in our life. Because technology has advanced so much, it seems as if there's no parts of the world that have been uncovered. And with that, we often become used to all the amazing things that happen around us. When you look at a child, it's amazing how fascinated they are with the things around them. A newborn baby is overwhelmed with all the new sights and sounds that they will experience. Every moment, their mind is taking in what's happening around them, which is causing them to grow and develop. And then you look at a child. A child gets so excited, perhaps, about Santa Claus or the Tooth Fairy or just movies in general. What do you think happened in your own life where you started to lose that sense of wonder? What were the things that happened to cause you to maybe become jaded in the world or just to forget that there are so many amazing things around you? When you stop and reflect on these questions, I would really hope that it would spark something new in you to revisit all those things when you were younger, which caused you to become amazed at the world around you. Some people may say, well, James, well, how would you do that? How would you renew your sense of wonder? Well, a lot of it just has to do with learning. When you learn something new, it causes you to grow and develop, just like that baby we talked about earlier. There are so many fascinating things in the world today. So sometimes just simply picking up a book. Another thing, if you're able to, is travel. When you travel to places you've never seen before, you will experience things in a way you never have before. Another thing to simply do is just to watch children play. When you can watch a child play and focus on the facial expressions they make or just focus on the things around them of the joy they experience in everything they do, that child is a really good role model for you to say, wow, how can I look at the world that same way? How can I recreate that sense of wonderment in everything that I do? When you can learn new things, it causes you to expand your world in a way you've never experienced before. I have a great guest for you today, Michael Grandinetti. He's one of the principal magicians in the CW's Masters of Illusion. He will definitely help you renew your sense of wonderment. He gets to live that every day. And so listen to his interview. It's not only inspiring, but it will cause you to look at the world in a wonderful, beautiful way. Did you know that I have a YouTube channel? That's actually how Lifeology started. I have well over 150 episodes that I've created specifically for you. I do know many people struggle with listening to a full 30-minute show, so these YouTube episodes are about three minutes long. Each episode teaches you one simple lesson that you can practice daily, which will help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. Simply go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com, and subscribe to my YouTube channel there, or go to youtube.com and search for my name, James Miller Lifeology. 
Michael Grandinetti is a musician who has been amazing audiences around the world for the past 20 years, with performances on national and international television shows in stadiums, arenas, casinos, and theaters around the country, and he's even performed at the White House. He returns with All New Illusions for his fourth season with a hit CW TV series, Masters of Illusion, on June 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific Time. Welcome to my show, Michael. Well, James, thank you so much. It's great to be here with you. I, my first question for you, and I can't wait to get to, to ask you this, is how did you even decide you wanted to be a magician as a little boy? You know, I always tell people that I am one of those lucky people that found what they love to do early in life. Mm. Um, I got a magic set for Christmas, and I think it's a pretty popular gift. I think still, I think a lot of kids get, get a magic set for Christmas. But for some reason, when I got this, you know, I was just hooked. Yeah. It just pulled me in, and I knew that this is what I wanted to do with my life. And from that point forward, magic was was my it, it, just, it was my motivation. Mm. It was my passion. It was, you know, everything I kind of did was all about how do I move down this path to be a professional magician. And, you know, a lot of kids have dreams of, of doing, you know, all kinds of careers. Uh, you know, if you think about it, but for me, I'm very lucky that I never, there was something in me that was very diligent and very determined and I never got off the path. So I, you know, I tell people that I can't, looking back on it, I started so young, I can't really remember a time where magic wasn't in my uh, life. That is so, so neat. Did you find that you even did it like, um, well, if, if, I guess if you did it all the time, but you did it at school. Did you find that even that your teachers would be like, Michael, put that away. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, the first time I ever performed, I actually took that magic set in to um, my kindergarten class for show and tell. Uh-huh. And, and so, you know, it, uh, I got up in front of the teachers and the, and the little kids and I was very nervous because I was very shy. Uh, and, and another, you know, I remember a, a little girl got up before me with the same magic set uh, and I was, I was devastated. I thought I am, I am sunk here, but, but for some reason I got up and, and, um, and the kids responded and the teacher smiled and, um, and it felt great. So you go, this uh, is what I want to do. Uh, you know? and they were, everybody was very, no, I mean, they were all very supportive, you know, everybody, the teachers and, 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 you know, my, my, you know, the, the other People like the kids I grew up with, everybody was very, very supportive. Oh, that's amazing. That, that's good. And obviously, that was a really good foundation for you and a really good memorable time for you to say, yes, this is now solidified even more what I want to do in my life. Absolutely. When you're a shy kid and you get that kind of approval from, from your peers or your teachers or the adults around, it makes you feel great. And it gives you that confidence to you know, keep doing this. It was a way for me to, to kind of come out of that shell, come out of that, shy, that shyness and to and to build that confidence. And it gave me something to do. It gave me a purpose. It gave me, yeah. like I said, motivation. And, uh, you know, I'm very lucky I found that. I, it was a very, uh, you know, it had many, many positive, uh, you know, benefits for me. And, and to this day, I love it just as much as I did when I was five years old. I've never lost that sense of, you know, that sense of excitement for it. Oh, that's amazing. I'm so happy for you. You know, as I got older, I started to think of it more as, you know, as a business and how do you do this and how do you mm-hmm. really make it work and, you know, all the things that it takes to actually make it a career. But the desire uh, to do it was always, you know, there was never a, there was never a plan B. This was what I always wanted to do. Wow. And I think that's one of the most important things when people can become that focused, it doesn't matter if it's, if what the world says, it's, you know, a very lucrative business or not. The fact is with that tenacity, with that motivation, with that desire to become something, it's going to happen. Yeah. I, you know, I think it's really important to find something that you love to do in life. You know, mm-hmm. everything else will fall into place if you are happy with what you, with, with what you do. You know, I, I wake up every morning excited to get to work and it's a great feeling. And I also remember people growing up and I know people now who, who kind of don't look forward to Monday mornings because mm-hmm. they don't enjoy going to work and enjoy what they do. And I, so I always tell people, you know, so I mean, look, reality is sometimes you have to, you know, you have to do those kinds of things. But at the same time, try and find that, that, um, that one aspect of your life that fulfills that passion you have. It's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot more fulfilling and it's a lot of fun. Yes, it, it really is. Because, you know, at the, at the end of the day, there's not going to be every single thing we like in life. There are things we tolerate and things we really enjoy. So when we keep that perspective in mind. It doesn't mean that we, every single thing we do, it has to be, you know, on the top of the mountaintop where we love it. There's always a growing season. There's always a time for us to learn and evolve into something different. Even if it's not, even if it's not your profession, mm-hmm. even if you have a passion that's a hobby or, you know, an interest that you do on the side, it, just, it is having that passion in your life, having that thing that you just love to do, um, it's just, it's, I can't imagine life without it. So I, my wish would be for everybody to find that, that thing in their life. 
Yeah, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> that is really great. Now, when you tell people, you know, that you're a magician, how do people typically take you? Well, they're, they're, they're intrigued because, mm-hmm. you know, it's still, magic is very popular, uh, especially right now. I mean, magic is in so many places, yeah. but comparative to a lot of the other art forms, it's still pretty rare. So, the, you know, people, people's exposure to magic is somewhat rare and their knowledge of, of you know, magic and being a magician is somewhat rare. So, uh, you know, people have great questions and mm-hmm. they're, and they're, uh, kind of intrigued by it, which I love. I, I love yeah, that. Yeah. I always tell people, like I told you, ask me whatever you want, except for how the magic works. <laughs> of but, course. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's always fun to, to, you know, when I meet new people and they, and we get a chance to talk about magic. I haven't been exposed so much to many magicians other than like David Copperfield and, you know, people that are kind of like you at the pinnacle of the career. I was actually looking um, on your YouTube channel and I was watching a dollar bill in a water bottle, I guess it was with a woman's purse. And if people can go to YouTube and look at your channel and watch some of your amazing feats, but it was so, it was, it was literally magical. I mean, I hate to say it'd be so cheesy like that, but it was really cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was a piece that we did last year on the, on the Masters, of Illusion, uh, Masters of Illusion TV show. And um, I'm so glad you liked it. You know, sometimes we do, uh, we spend a lot of time and a lot of work doing these large scale illusions, uh, you know, making motorcycles appear, walking through walls. And sometimes it's those smaller pieces mm-hmm. that really connect with people. And that's one of the ones that I found really, um, you know, that proves it doesn't have to be large in scale, but if people can relate to it, I think yeah. because it uses... You know, everyday object, uh, uh-huh. you know, a woman yeah. from the audience and her purse and her water bottle and, and uh, you know, her money that she lent. And um, so I'm so glad you like that one. That, honestly, that is one of my favorite pieces that we've done. Also. Yeah, because yeah, you can see the girl. She was like, what? How did, how did you even do that? And then I saw the body eraser one, which was amazing, of course. And then the walking through the steel one, which, of course, I'd I love to ask you how you did it, but I won't do it <laughs> out of respect. But no, it was, I mean, all those were, were so neat. But I wanted to ask you, how do you come up with your... Um, with your tricks? I mean, how, what, what motivates you to try something new or something different? Because obviously not behind the scenes of how it works, but how do you, how do you create the idea of saying, you know, this would be really cool. I've never seen this before. I would like to try this. Well, that's actually the element of my job that I love the most mm-hmm. is coming up with new pieces of magic to add to the show. I'm always looking for ways to, uh, you know, make my show more amazing for an audience. My, that's my whole mission. My whole yeah. mission is to give the audience as much amazement as humanly possible. You want them walking out of a theater or at the end of a TV show, just going, wow, I cannot believe that. Cause it's a very positive, very uplifting feeling, that feeling mm-hmm. of amazement. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's, I, I look for, you know, inspiration for illusions all over the place. I mean, it's, it's just, um, I tell people, you never shut off the magician switch. You're always thinking whether I'm, um, you know, in an airport somewhere, or I'm, you know, walking through a mall somewhere, or I hear a piece of music on the radio in the car, or you know, you just, there's always, you, my mind is always kind of going, is that an idea? Can I use that for mm. something? Can that be transformed into a piece of magic? It just, it just, it's always, and I think songwriters, I've heard musicians say the mm-hmm. same thing that, you know, that the music is kind of always swirling around their head and they're, you know, it's very much the same for me. It's not a, it's not a nine to five job. It is a, it is a, you know, condition of life, Mm -hmm. um, being a magician. So the inspiration you know, I look for it everywhere, really. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's absolutely wonderful. I know one thing for me, when I, as a content provider for, in my field, uh, for my YouTube channels or for my, even my shows, I'm always, I have like a running list on my phone of something that comes up, um, something that comes up that's in the world today or a theme I hear or a struggle I hear someone maybe going through. And, and I put that on the list. I'm like, oh, that would be a great topic for my show, maybe for later. And so I, I agree with you. I mean, obviously we have different ways in which that rolls out, but I, I think it makes sense as a content provider, you're always looking for something. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'll give you a quick example. That steel wall piece that you saw on video, huh? that whole idea came about because I heard a piece of music. Oh, really? I heard a piece of music. Yeah, and I instantly, instantly in my head, as soon as I heard this music for the first time, I saw kind of one hand coming through a wall and another mm. hand coming through a wall and then pulling, pulling, the body through, pulling my body through the wall. And, you know, it just, it put that, that image right in my mind. Um, and for some reason, it also put the image of steel of a steel wall in my mind, hmm. and it just it just instantly popped into my head from hearing that piece of music. So if I hadn't heard wow. that piece of music, you know, I don't know if that version of it, the way that we do it, I don't know if that would have been created exactly like that. So huh. you never know where it's going to come from. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 really cool. Who are some of the magicians that have inspired you? Well, you know, I got to tell you, when I was a kid growing up. Uh, there was no, not to date myself, not to sound old. There was no internet. There was no YouTube. 
I'm the same age. Uh, I'm, I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, but I would I would trade videotapes with people around the world, and mm. I enjoyed any time. There wasn't any one person, um, but any any magician who I could look at and go, "Wow, they put their work into that. They put mm. time into that. that. That is creative." You know, you could, as a magician you don't get a chance to be amazed when you watch magic. Cause you kind of, like I said, you think like a magician, mm -hmm. but you can watch it. You can look at it from, the, from a different perspective and understand everything that went into it. So I would tell you the magicians that I really enjoy, um, are the ones where I look at and go, and you can just tell that they put a lot of thought and time yeah. and effort into doing magic. well, because it's not easy to do well, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a very you know complicated art form. So when you see it done well, and yeah, that's what I admire. And that's what I was going to say about you. Not that you need me to say this, but I noticed that about you is how polished you are, how you interact with your audience, how obviously how well you perform the illusions. I mean, obviously I, I don't know anything about that, but in the sense of how you do it, how your presentation is. And so a compliment to you, I suppose, is just, I was really impressed with how polished your presentation is. So I think it's, it's just probably one of the reasons why you're so successful as you are and being one of the stars of your show, Masters of Illusions. I think, I think it's great. So I can definitely see the hard work that you put into your show as well. Well, thank you. I, I, you know, I really appreciate you saying that. And look, at the end of the day, I'm a guy out there just doing what he <laughs> loves to do. So I think that, you know, my, I tell people my happiest time is when I'm out there performing. So it, it's just, I hope that that comes through to the audience and, uh, and I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, of course. How did you segue into television? Well, I mean, there, that was always one of my goals as well, because I knew that to get the most visibility for what you do in anything, I mean, television is obviously the key. Mm -hmm. When I was a senior in college, NBC was taping a special, uh, called the world's most dangerous magic. And I was living in, I grew up, I was born and raised in Pittsburgh. So I was mm -hmm. on the East coast. And that same year, we had produced a show in Pittsburgh uh, where we did, uh, my team and I, I had a great group of people. You know, I was, I've been very lucky to have great group, great people that I've worked with over all these years. Um, but we produced this show. One of the pieces in the show was that it was this very big spike escape where I would get chained to a frame between these two walls of steel spikes. And the spikes were connected to an hourglass. And when the hourglass ran out, the spikes came in. And if I didn't get out, it would be bad. Oh my God. So, you know, yeah, it was very, and, and, and the dangers were real. I mean, the spikes are real. If those hit you, you are in trouble. Uh. So I did that. And the people who were doing the NBC show heard about it. And it, not only were they intrigued by the illusion, but the fact that I was in college at the time, this college mm -hmm. kid who had this giant, who was attempting this giant dangerous escape really kind of intrigued them. So they invited me to come out to LA and, and be part of the show. So we taped that for NBC. Oh, wow. And, um, and it was a thrill. I mean, it was, it was, it was so exciting. Uh, you know, it was my first time in LA. It was my first time on national television. It, then again, it, it was like, this is the goal. I want to mm. do more of this. I want to go after this. So I, I, very shortly thereafter, I moved to LA with the, with the goal of combining magic and television. So I spent a good amount of time in LA meeting everybody that I could and talking to everybody that I could about kind of my goal. Because if, you know, TV, if TV is what you want to do, LA is kind of where you need to be. Exactly. So I made sure that I, I was very proactive and I set up a lot of meetings and I talked to just as many people as I could. Well, once you do that, you kind of get on people's radar. And we've been doing shows. I mean, since moving to LA, I mean, we've been doing shows for many years around the country. So when the producers were putting this show together, I'm very flattered that they thought of us and they called mm -hmm. and they said what they wanted to do. And, uh, and I love the idea. So I got to tell you another thing. I've turned down several opportunities to be on television because it wasn't the right thing for me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the right thing for magic. It no. wasn't, it, it wasn't the right thing. I, I want to be very careful about it and, and, you know, do things in the right way for me sure. in the right direction. One of the mottos yeah. I was live by and I was telling my listeners is it's just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. And so I really love to hear that lesson you're teaching us as well is, just because something you have an opportunity for something doesn't mean it's the right time or the right fit. And so to really listen to your gut and really pull back and say, just because I can doesn't probably mean I should right now. So I just wanted to throw that out real fast. And I, I'm really glad that you're teaching my listeners that as well. No, I agree with you completely. I think that is, that is really important when you're thinking long term, when you're thinking, mm -hmm. of, and I always, I always think long range. I always think what's going to get me, what's going to keep me on the path to my long range goals. Uh, but this show, you know, this show was, just about creating a show that the entire family could sit down and watch every week 
Um, and, and I love that idea. I love the idea that it was just, it was magicians bringing their best illusions of Hollywood, performing the illusions for a live audience. Um, and so every week people around the country can tune in and see all different types of magic. And like I said, it's a great show for the whole family. One of my favorite things, um, that I've been told about the show is people say they DVR it and they watch it. They play it for their kids all weekend or they watch it oh, yeah. because it's just fun. It's yeah. a fun show. So that I, you know, I, I like about the show very much. So yeah, it's kind of, you know, my, my path in television and I continued on that path. We're working on several other TV projects, you know, as well as we speak. Oh, that, that's amazing. So my listeners, Michael is talking about his, the, the show Masters of Illusions on the CW. And so we are definitely going to segue into that again. So as you're talking about that, why don't you give a synopsis uh, to my listeners of what that show is actually about? Well, it, it's, you know, basically the premise of Masters of Illusion is that the producers are invited to L.A., to Hollywood, um, who they feel are the best magicians from around the country and, and around the world. I mean, they have people from all over the world coming out for the show. And they invite them to bring their best illusions and their best pieces of magic. And it's all performed in front of a live audience. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's filmed with eight cameras. So when you, when you, so every week you get to tune in and you see six or eight different magicians uh, filmed beautifully from every angle. Like it's, it's better than if you're actually watching live. <laughs> and it's, right. uh, I mean, you get to see, it's amazing how they, how they film this thing. It looks beautiful. Uh, but you get to sit back and watch magic like you're in the theater, right in your living room. Um, and, and the fun part of it is, is there's so many different styles of magic. You know, magic from Europe, for example, is completely different from magic from, you know, the U.S. in many ways. Oh, that's and, interesting. I never would have thought of that. That makes me think, and I'm oh, totally being, being like a nerd here, but it makes me think of like Harry Potter, of those different types of magicians in different places. <laughs> the different magic oh, it's true. in front of them, yeah. It's true. It's like, it's like musicians. It's <laughs> like, it's all the different styles of music out there. Magic is much the same. So it's a fun show to sit and watch and just see all different types of magic. Oh, that is so cool. I've, I've, I'm actually going to go back and watch it again. I didn't, I didn't realize that. This is the fourth season, and so you're one of the four principal magicians that are on the show. Yeah, I've been on all four seasons, and we've had a great time with it. And for me, it's always been about, I always tell people I'm not in competition with other magicians, but I'm very much in competition with myself. Mm. So every year that we come back and we do this show, it's always about, okay, how do I talk what I've done in the past? Yeah. How do I make this better? Season four hasn't even air aired yet, and I'm already thinking about if we're lucky enough to get the green light for season five, all right, how do I make it better? It's been kind of a fun challenge for me. Well, I really like the fact that you are competitive within yourself. I mean, I think in, in any, it really doesn't matter in any type of setting you're in, but if, when people start to be too competitive with, with their peers and not do it in a synergistic way of helping each other get better, then you literally lose the the awe or you lose the passion of what it is you're doing. So I'm so glad to hear that that's obviously not part of your personality. And I think it really comes across as well when your audience watches you because you can see the joy. You can see that you are very much enthralled and impassioned by what you do. I was going to ask you when you, when the show is, so the show is in front of a live studio audience, but it's not live for the TV viewers though, correct? No, that is correct. We take the show a couple months, um, before it actually airs. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I would assume just like a normal, but I wasn't sure if with, with it being a live audience, if it was also translated to a live viewership on TV. That does make oh, sense. Oh, that's a great idea. That, that's actually a great idea. It would be fun to do one of those shows actually live. So you may be onto something there. Well, who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> that is great. And it, uh, the host is Dean Kane. That's correct? Correct. Yes. He's been the host all four years. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I remember him, obviously, from Superman. I mean, I think we all remember him from his debut role as Superman. <laughs> and he's great. He yeah. does a great job. And I've done a couple of promotional appearances with him, and he's a great guy as well. So it's, it's always, uh, you know, I don't, they, they pick the perfect guy for that job. Oh, that is good. So what's on the horizon for you? What are we going to hear about uh, next, let's say, the next couple of years for you? Well, you know what? It is a, it is a very busy time. We are not only in the process of, um, you know, getting everything ready for the launch of this TV show, but my live show that I take around the country, uh, we keep a very busy schedule traveling from coast to coast, doing magic for everything from you know, casinos to theaters to, we do stadium and arena shows. We do a lot of halftime shows for the, for the football and baseball and basketball games. You know, uh, uh, we do baseball games. We do a lot of, um, pre and post game shows for the major league baseball games. Um, shows with symphony orchestras, oh you know, goodness. you name it, everywhere you can think of, you know, where we could take magic. We, we push hard to take magic out there. So we keep it very, yeah. I mean, it's basically nonstop. And the other thing that we're doing now is we're developing a lot of brand new illusions for our live show. So people who've seen our show in the past, 
you know, if we come back to your town, uh, you're going to see a lot of new stuff. So hmm. I always tell people, if you see a magician with a really long Italian last name coming to your town, it's probably us. <laughs> so, uh, you know, <laughs> come and see us. But yeah, there's no rest in sight. It's, it's, a, it's a full schedule ahead. That's wonderful. And I wanted to ask you this earlier. You performed at the White House. Tell us about that. Absolutely. Well, that was definitely one of the highlights of my <laughs> performing career. It, it, was, it was almost surreal. It was one of those things where you're, where you're doing it and you kind of look around and you go, wow, this almost seems like this isn't really happening. We were invited to perform at the White House for Easter. And obviously, as you can imagine, security is incredibly tight. When you go there, the Secret Service inspects everything. And when you're a magician coming in with all this, <laughs> yeah. in, you can imagine what that, what that, how that goes. That and there are rules. There, you know, no fire, no this, no that. I mean, there, there, you, so you definitely have to adapt what you're doing to the environment, but, but completely understandable and, and no problem with that at all. And then, you know, the, the president and his family. This was a couple of, of administrations ago, but. The president and his family were, were about 25 feet away from us. Oh, my gosh. And it was, yeah, it was, it was amazing. I mean, it was, it was such a thrill and such an honor to, to be able to do that. I, I think back to that kid who got the magic set for Christmas when I was just five years old. And it just makes me feel very fulfilled that I've been able to pursue that, that dream mm-hmm. that I had. And literally, I mean, you're performing in front of one of the most powerful families in the world. I mean, that's, that's, that's absolutely amazing. What a moment of reflection. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of, you know, effort to do. Well, everybody's job is a lot of work. But the goal of a magician is to make it look easy. But behind mm-hmm. making it look easy, there's a ton of work. So when you when you get an opportunity like that, it really makes you go, okay, it's so nice to see all of that effort and passion and heart that I put into this kind of take in this direction. That is, that's, that's so inspiring. Thank you so much. Well, Michael, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on my show today. If my listeners want to find out more information about you and about the show, Masters of Illusion, where would they find this information online? Well, the best place to connect with me is my website, which is michaelgrandinetti.com. On social media, I'm under Michael Grandinetti on everything. So on Facebook, I'm Michael Grandinetti. On Twitter, I'm Grandinetti MG. On Instagram, I'm Michael Grandinetti. And then keep an eye on the CW website for, for all the Masters of Illusion info. And James, it was great talking with you. Thank you so much for having uh, me on. Yeah, I really definitely. appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. It's my pleasure. And my listeners, in case you don't know how to spell his last name, it's G-R-A-N-D-I-N-E-T-T-I. Michael, once again, thank you so much for being a guest on my show today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Hey, thank you so much. I hope we talk again soon. I also want to thank you, my listener, for joining with me today. Please subscribe to this radio show through whichever portal you joined with me. Also, please go to my website where you may sign up for my newsletter, enroll in the Lifeology Academy, watch my YouTube episodes, and read all the articles I've written just for you. If you'd like to become a guest or advertise on my show, simply visit jamesmillerlifeology.com. You may also follow me on all social media platforms under the name James Miller Lifeology, except for Twitter, which is James M. Lifeology. Have a fantastic day, and I look forward to speaking with you very soon.